That's good so far. Certain that you follow that. That's not difficult, but we have to be careful with what we're going to do now because we're going to look at something called recurrence relation. And recurrence suggests coming back. Something recurs, it comes back. So recurrence relation suggests that something is coming back all the time. So we need to see what a recurrence relation happens to be. And then we will use that idea in working out some more sequences. Now when we speak of a recurrence relation, all that we're saying is that a sequence, when it is defined by, by recurrence relation, it suggests that the term after, the term after is calculated by using the term before. So the term before is coming back. So the next term is calculated by using the previous term. That's what we mean. So let's just put that down. So recurrence relation, one in which The next term, which is the term that comes after, is calculated using the previous term. Next term is calculated using the previous term. Now look at this example. Now let's say a sequence is defined by, and this is how it is defined, is defined by u n plus 1 is equal to u n plus 3, and you're told that u1 is equal to 4. List the first four terms. List the first four terms. Well, you may say, how do we deal with that? Let's just do it in a very simple manner. Now, remember, you are told that the first term is 4. That was given. So u1 equals 4 is given. You need to find u2, u3, and u4. Because we're told the first four terms, but we already have the first one. Now, how do we get the second term, which is u2? Now, this is where you need to pay a lot of attention. This is the definition for the sequence. un plus 1 equals un plus 3. If we want u2, it means that here has to be 2. Now, if the n plus 1 has to be 2, in order for us to say u2, it means that the value of n will have to be 1. The value of n will have to be 1. So, in u2, n will have to be 1 in order for us to qualify to say we have u 1 plus 1, that gives us u 2. n has to be 1. And if n has to be 1, it means that over here will be u 1 plus 3. So we are going to get u 2, the 2 comes from 1 plus 1, u 2 equal u 1 plus 3. I repeat, n is 1, so that we get a 2. So n has to be 1 there. So we're going to get u 2 equal u 1 plus 3 u1 plus 3. Now you may ask, where are we heading? Remember, let's go back to the definition. One in which the next term is calculated using the previous term. Now look at this. u2 is equal to u1 plus 3. But what really is u1? u1 is 4. u1 is 4. So u1 plus 3 is the same as 4 plus 3. So we get 7. So the term is actually 7. So we, we actually calculated u2 using the term that we had before, which was u1. That's what comes out of the definition. But let's move on. u3. Now for us to get u3, we need to know that n will then have to become 2. Because 2 plus 1 is 3. So n will have to become 2. So let's put 2 here. So n becomes 2. Now if n becomes 2, 2 plus 1, 3, means that that would have to be a 2. So we're going to get u3 is equal to u2 plus 3. Let me put that here. Now you see what is happening? It says for us to get u3, we need u2 and add on 3 to it. But what is u2? Go back up here. u2 is equal to 7. So when we say u2 plus 3, we mean 7 plus 3. That's 10. 
Sorting is going along quite fine. Let's get to U4. If we want U4, let's get back to this. N will have to be 3 because 3 plus 1 would give you 4. So if N is 3, 3 will have to go there. So we'll have to get U3. So let's put this here. N will have to be 3. Therefore, we are going to get here that U4, 4 from here, is equal to U3 plus 3. But what is U3? From above, U3 is 10. So we get 10 plus 3 equal 13. Hence, we have the first term, we have the second term, the third term, and the fourth term. So we have satisfied the requirements of the question. Because the question says, the question says that you must have four terms. For some persons, that might be a little tricky. But then if you followed what we did there, you notice that after the first term, to get the second term, we use back the first. To get the third term, we use back the second. To get the fourth term, we use back the third. So therefore, it satisfies one in which the next term is calculated using the previous term. So if the previous term is wrong, you're going to have errors going through the problem. Let's look at another example. So these recurrence relations, you have to really concentrate or you may not be able to get them done very, very well. Now let's look at this example. So we have a sequence is defined by, we have un plus 1. Is that the one we just did? Um, let's just check and see. Okay, U, un plus 1 times un is equal to, and this one looks a little troublesome, but we will just do a little bit of it and see what we can get from it. 3, and this is minus 1 to the power n. As a matter of fact, this is a past question that came in 2006. It's from paper 1 of 2006. We just want to do a part of it, and we're told that u1 is equal to 1. Write down the first four terms. When we, when we have done that, we'll finish the lesson for today. So we want to write down the first four terms. Okay, it looks a little terrible over there, but don't worry too much. Now u1 is equal to 1. What is u2? What is u3? What is u4? We get those and then we're through with the question. Now, we notice that we have two things here, and the one we did before, we had un plus 1, but here has a un there as well. So what we could actually do is that we could actually take this, and we could actually revise it and write it as follows, that un plus 1, because you see, if we want just the un plus 1, we could divide both sides by the un. So we could write un plus 1 is equal to 3, negative 1 to the power n, and we divide that by un, which means we divide both sides by what we don't want, right? So the un can go over there. So this would be better for us to work with, or else we'll have to keep dividing both sides, right? Now, let's go on quickly. If we want u2, u2 would mean that n has to be 1, right? u2 would mean that n has to be 1, because 1 will go there. So if n is 1, we get u2. So over here, since n is 1, we get 3 minus 1 to the power 1. So it's really 3 minus 1 to the power 1 divided by un and that un becomes u1 because remember we say in this case that n will have to be 1 so n has to be 1 here now what do we get for this very quickly um, the top 3 negative 1 to the 1 power is negative 1 3 times negative neg 3 times negative 1 would be negative 3 u1 now remember we told up here u1 is 1 so we put 1 there so the answer is negative 3 so we have Two terms. Two more to go. Let's get to U3. I'll have to just create a little space here. Let's get this done quickly. I believe I can give you the U4 to try on your own. So I'll do the U3 and give you the U4. Next time you can pick up from that. Now U3 would mean that N will have to be 2. Now if N would have to be 2, we get over on the other side there, 3, negative 1 to the power 2. Because remember N is 2 and we get U2 there. Well, now, what do we get for this? 
negative 1 squared is positive 1 times 3 give us 3 now u2 is what we got there remember u2 is negative 3 so we get 3 divided by negative 3 our answer is negative 1 so I give you a little assignment here your job find out what is u4 certain that we are excited to do that so what we'll do, we'll close off the lesson at this point, and we hope that you will look out for the worksheet, try to do U4, and next time when we come, we can do a bit more on sequences because we have a lot more to cover. So I hope that you're enjoying vincyclassroom.com. That's all for now.